I don't know about the show, but how freaking good is that song? There's one thing Netflix's The Witcher has over Game of Thrones, it's that the series of books it is based on is complete. There's not going to be any money-grubbing showrunners hastily wrapping it up so they can move on to the next project. It's still a way off being the event television that Thrones was, and while it has some similar elements – fantasy, titties, sword fighting, political intrigue, magic and more titties – it's kind of ridiculous to expect the show to be the new Game of Thrones. The Witcher is more like a darker and sexier version of Hercules or Xena meets maybe Hellboy. Most people would have been introduced to The Witcher through the short stories and books by Andrzej Zapkowski, or the awesome series of video games by CD Projekt Red. The latest instalment in the game series, The Wild Hunt, just might be one of the greatest video games of all time. Initially, The Witcher was set to become a standalone film until Netflix intervened and pushed for the source material to be adapted into a longer running series. Many expected the Netflix series to be a disaster. Many thought the video game curse would apply to the TV series in the same way it has for pretty much every video game movie ever made, and the majority of critics certainly geared their early reviews to that effect. You have to choose the lesser evil. It's an ultimatum. Get it? Fuck. The fans, however, have counterpunched, and The Witcher has been listed as the third most in demand original streaming series on debut, coming in closely behind Stranger Things and The Mandalorian. Not bad for something that is slightly more niche than the competition. So, critics be damned! Such was the hype and anticipation for season one, Netflix went ahead and greenlit season two before they even went live. I've heard tales of your kind, Witcher. You're a mutant. Created by magic. Showrunner Lauren Schmidt Hisrick, who is best known for her writing on The West Wing as well as production for Private Practice and Daredevil, has spoken out against the critics, saying she is more concerned about what real fans think. She recently tweeted, Who do I care about? professional critics who watched one episode and skipped ahead, or real fans who watched all eight in one day and are starting their rewatch. I am fucking thrilled. The story is set in a world known as the Continent and follows a monster hunter named Geralt of Rivia. Geralt is a witcher, a human that has been mutated by magic to be strong enough to take toxic potions and fight monsters. Fuck. The Witcher's world is full of things like elves and dwarves, but due to an event called the Conjunction of the Spheres, their world came into contact with other worlds inhabited by things like vampires and werewolves. The continent is populated by all of these monsters, but is run by kingdoms and factions that all have their own rivalries and agendas. Now, the worst of them is Nilfgaard, and you can tell that they're the baddies because of their black armour that looks way cooler than everyone else's. There's also sorcerers, and the main character here is a chick named Yennefer of Vengerberg, and a princess on the run from a Nilfgaard invasion named Cirilla. As a result, there's three timelines to follow throughout the first season – Geralt's, Yennefer's, and Cirilla's. There's not a lot in the ways of explanation about said timelines early on, which is confusing until more is revealed in later episodes, and this could explain more about why some fans perhaps are re-watching. <sighs> Ah, oh, fuck. Here you are. Henry Cavill raised early speculation among fans when he was cast as Geralt, with numerous articles highlighting actors like Viggo Mortensen, Mads Mikkelsen, or even Idris Elba being more suited to the role. However, he takes total ownership of the character in the opening scenes, and audiences would be hard-pressed to find a more perfect Geralt, even with a pretty shitty hairpiece. Fuck. Cavill has been a huge fan of the books and the games for some time, and it really shows. 
Anya Chalotra turns in a very physical performance as Yennefer and adds some emotional depth to the story in the wake of Geralt's rather stony lead character. Freya Allen feels slightly pasted into the story here as Cirilla, but fans will know how important her character becomes and will hope to see more of her in Season 2. The most fun to be had is when Joey Beatty enters the story as the bard Jaskia, adding light to Geralt's shade. He is an excellent addition to the cast, and of course he's responsible for that song. Toss a coin to your witcher, O Valley of Plenty, whoa. Toss a coin to your witcher, a friend of humanity. Special effects are okay, but some of the CGI seems a little cheap. They are actually at their best when they move to the more practical stuff. The soundtrack, as I mentioned before, is pretty awesome. And the fight choreography is for the most part outstanding. They have taken some liberties with the source material in supplying more of a backstory for Yennefer. A lot of critics have said that Yennefer's story makes her look weak next to Geralt, which is in contrast to the books where they're equal in their strength and power. But this is something that I think is open to interpretation. Some will see Yennefer's character stronger, both physically and emotionally, thanks to the backstory and seeing what she has been through. Witcher fans will love it, and newcomers will find it enjoyable enough to make it through the first season, even with those convoluted timelines. I will take the girl, protect her, and bring her back unharmed. The Witcher series has just the right amount of camp, it's sexy without being gratuitous, has plenty of thrills to keep audiences happy, and is at its best when it gets into the darker, more monstrous subject matter. It's the most fun you can have without a joystick. Four out of five. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a like, please make a comment, and for more straight shooting reviews, head on over to thewatchman.com.au.